This evening we're going to talk about boundaries. So what we need to do is get a really good understanding of what boundaries are. Now, we, we've been taught that boundaries are only when we push back, when we say no, it's what we don't want, you know, because this is what we've only heard in terms of boundaries. When we hear about boundaries, it's always in the moments where it's something bad that's happening to you. So again, in the moments where we've always needed to push back. For example, only when you're sticking up for yourself or only when something is okay, is not okay, that's happening to me. But what are boundaries? The best way to describe it would be boundaries are guidelines to how someone relates from the self to the rest of the world. So think of them as rules of conduct, essentially. They are based on our beliefs, our opinions, the attitude we have, our past experiences, and our social learnings. Our personal boundaries come in both directions. They, they go out and they come in as well. Boundaries are what a person likes or dislikes, essentially. An example of this would be one person would like chocolate ice cream, the other person would prefer vanilla ice cream. That is a boundary. So it helps to define, it. the boundary helps to define that person, what's right for them and what's wrong for them. Now, once we define what's right or wrong for us, that's what helps us know how we will and won't allow ourselves to be treated by others. So boundaries are your personal truth. So if we go against the personal truth, then we're going against the self, the self of who we are. This is where self abandonment comes in. And when we do that, this is then an, an unhealthy boundary. So what are some of the unhealthy boundaries that we have? For example, we'll say yes when we mean no, or we'll say no when we mean yes. We can follow that up by the feeling of guilt when we do say yes or when we do say no. We, an unhealthy boundary would be to have sex when you don't want to. We, an unhealthy boundary is to go against your own values to please others. It's not speaking up when you have something to say, whether it's in a group of people or whether it's just you and one other person. An unhealthy boundary is when you adopt someone else's beliefs and ideas just for acceptance, to be accepted by the people that you are with. An unhealthy boundary can be not saying anything to someone that has mistreated you. Being okay with being interrupted to accommodate for someone else, that again is an unhealthy boundary. Giving too much so you can be seen as useful, that again is an unhealthy boundary. Not communicating your emotional needs in a relationship would be again an unhealthy boundary. So it's very important to understand the only way I allow others to violate my boundaries is because I have violated my boundaries. When I do this, I'm not staying true to what feels good to me. The only way someone else can violate a boundary of mine is if I allow that to happen. And the way I allow that to happen is by violating that boundary myself. And again, this is where self abandonment comes in. Now, there are very, very challenges in terms of boundaries. You know, we tend to think they should be based on right or wrong, but what is right or wrong? One person's right is completely different to another person's right. It's very, very subjective. What is right or wrong? So 
you know, we have examples of cultures thinking certain ways are right and other cultures thinking certain ways are wrong as well. So there is no right or wrong, really. It's all subjective. We base them on what other people think as well. So I believe, or better yet, I will set a boundary based on what other people believe my boundary should be. So what are my boundaries? I'm, I, I don't know, you know, I've, I've, all of this is happening. I'm not entirely even sure what my boundaries are because I've learned to abandon myself. I've learned to base it on right or wrong, which is subjective. And I also base it on what other people believe that I should base my boundaries on. How do I know what my boundaries are? Your boundaries are defined through your feelings. Your personal boundaries are defined through how you feel. So what are feelings? Feelings are a system to get your attention. Now, if I feel emotionally, it's to get my attention to look at an emotion. If someone crosses my boundary and it makes me feel an emotion, then the feeling is getting my attention to that emotion to give me feedback. So these systems are a feedback system. How do I know what my boundaries are? I use my feedback system to figure that out. Your feelings and how you feel let you know when your boundary has been violated. Again, it's a feedback system. But my entire life, I was taught not to listen to my feelings, not to listen to my emotions. My entire life, I was taught that I feel wrong. So not only have I learned to push away my emotions and push away how I feel, but even in those moments where I do feel an emotion, I don't have the confidence in myself to believe that if that's right or wrong, because I've learned to push them away. I don't even know if this is what I should feel or shouldn't feel because I've learned this throughout my life. I've not ever been taught what my emotions are, what my feelings are. So I think, and I believe that I shouldn't feel the way I do. So if someone crosses my boundary and that doesn't make me feel good, then I convince myself that I shouldn't feel like that. Because other people have told me that it's okay. You should be okay with that. So now I'm abandoning how I feel based on what's happened, which has crossed a boundary of mine. Now we have different types of boundaries. We have physical boundaries, emotional boundaries, mental boundaries, we have spiritual boundaries, and we have sexual boundaries as well. So if someone said something to hurt me, they crossed an emotional boundary. If they said something and I emotionally feel bad, whatever that feeling is, then they have crossed that emotional boundary. And I know that based on the way that I feel about that. So let's say you get to, you go to a party you don't want to go to and you feel bad emotionally because you didn't really want to go to that party, even though someone invited you to go and you went, yeah, okay, I'll go. That bad feeling is letting you know that you've crossed your own boundary. So I've abandoned how I feel in that moment. I've crossed my own boundary and the feedback is letting me know that that's what that's happened. It's so important to be in touch with how you feel. Our entire lives, we've been taught not to be in touch with our feelings, but it's literally how we know what our boundaries are, what, our, what the truth is about ourselves. If you don't listen to and respect how you feel, you violate your own boundary. If you don't listen to and respect how others feel, then you violate their 
boundary. You violate other people's boundaries. Now I understand more what boundaries are, but I still can't seem to set them. I still can't, even though now I understand that my emotions and how I feel are a feedback. Someone did something to me and now I'm recognizing that I feel like this and that's crossed my boundary. But I'm still really, really struggling with setting that boundary or saying something to them. We grow up learning to abandon ourselves. We grow up learning to abandon ourselves because this is how I'm accepted. So in our childhood, I must abandon myself to be accepted and to make others happy. If there are scenarios where I grow up and I learn that if my caregiver is unhappy and this unhappy could be from them being mad at me, it could be just them being angry, it could be them being fearful. And when that happens, the environment is unsafe for me. Something might happen in that environment that is cross my boundary, but I look for safety. So I need to do whatever I need to do or can do to make that person, whether it's my caregiver or someone else happy, because that's how I get my safety. So now I have learned that I am safe when I abandon my own boundaries and cater to other people. So this is an unconscious pattern of mine. How do I start setting boundaries? I recognize where the fear of setting boundaries comes in because any time I tried to get my needs met through how I felt, so I may have felt angry. I may have felt scared, sad. In those moments, I would react in a certain way. And that would be my truth. That is the truth of who I am in that moment. Now in that moment, I might get scolded for behaving in a way that my caregivers didn't see as acceptable. And that would have led to me being scolded. So now my personal truth doesn't matter because that becomes dangerous for me. So every time I have tried to show my personal truth, it's always turned out to be unsafe for me. So now that is an unconscious pattern that I've carried into adulthood. So the reason I find it so hard to set boundaries now as an adult is because of that pattern. Because of that pattern that happened hundreds of times, if not thousands of times throughout my life. So now I have learned through the way I felt unsafe in those moments that I have to abandon myself. Because even, even little things like Let's say my caregivers wanted to do something. Oh, let's, let's go over here. Let's go out and do this today. And I'd be like, oh, I don't want to do that. Even in those moments, I might get scolded. I might get shamed. So I'm learning more and more that what I want is actually making me unsafe. So I, I, the only way that I stay safe is by abandoning myself. I'm only accepted when I do what other people believe that I should do or what other people do. So as an adult, I will accept going to parties when I don't really want to. I will, my friends will ask something for me and I'll be too tired, but I won't say no because I'm worried about what they might think of me. Unconsciously, I'm concerned and worried about they might not accept me for me or they might not accept me because I've learned that the version of me that doesn't want to do these things, which is the truth, because that's what my boundary is. That version of me is not accepted. So now I have to continue this version of me that 
is accepted by others because acceptance means safety. So how do I get to a place where I can start setting boundaries? I have to heal those parts of me. I have to heal the parts of me that are, have learnt that I have to please others. I have to heal the parts of me that have learnt that I need to abandon myself in order to be accepted by others. These are aspects within ourselves. How do we heal these aspects? We have to meet their needs. We've got to start listening to them. We have to start listening to them through the emotion that they are carrying. We are humans. Humans have needs. It's very, very normal to have needs. When I abandon myself and do what someone else does, then what I'm doing is I'm getting a need met through that transaction. That need is acceptance. That need might be love. That need might be if that other person sees me as useful, then that means I'm good enough. That means I'm lovable. That means I'm desirable. Those are needs. So if I get to the stage where I heal so much of myself and meet those needs of these parts of myself and without needing externally from anyone else, if I can meet the need that I'm and then change the belief that I am good enough on my own within myself and that I am desirable on my own within myself, then I don't need that to meet met externally. So then at that point, if someone asks me to do something or tells me to do something and I don't want to, I can say I don't want to because then I'm not needing anything. And once I'm not needing anything because I'm meeting those needs myself, it's easy to say no. No, I don't want to. And this is what the healing journey is. To set boundaries can be one of the most scariest things for someone on their healing journey. The reason why it can be so scary is because of that, is because we are getting a need met in that transaction. By doing something which is abandoning ourselves and going towards what the other person wants instead of what we want, we are actually getting something from that. Once we give that stuff to ourselves, it's not scary anymore to say no. We can easily say no and we won't go away and go home and start ruminating about it and start worrying about it and thinking the worst all the time because that is what ha has been created because of the experiences we've had. So it's not about forcing yourself to set boundaries. To force yourself is to kind of jump in the deep end, is to, you know, take the inner child to a really, really scary place. And we don't need to do that. We just need to learn how to meet these needs ourselves. And then you will get to a place where you're comfortable enough to start setting the boundaries that your emotions and how you feel are telling you that what your personal truth is. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you'd like to learn how to emotionally heal yourself, check out my online course titled Emotionally Heal Yourself. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And also click that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video.